Good day everyone. Maying adlaw sa tanan. Labi na ato diha sa mga kababayan na diha sa Buho, Garcia Hernandez Bohol. We are here at Kent, United Kingdom, particularly the Leeds Castle. The Leeds Castle is one of the uh, fortified castles of the United Kingdom back back in time. So we will try to explore the place, how the, the royal people live. We will try to see their rooms, their tops, their salas, their galleries. It's all in there and we will try to see it today. And, and also we will try to see the famous maze of the Leeds Castle. Okay, so let's go and see ya. Yeah. Let's have a look, see. 28, did you bought these today? Yeah, this today. Ah, well done. <laughs> Don't lose them. <laughs> Thank you. Hiya. Considered the loveliest castle in the world, Leeds Castle is simply stunning, one of the most favorite places to go. There are so many reasons to love Leeds Castles in Kent. The castle is set within 500 acres of the most beautiful and picturesque grounds. At the center, a picture-perfect castle surrounded by a moat. A nice added bonus is that you only pay to enter once. You can then return as many times as you like within a year. Basically an annual pass for the price of one day entry. Your journey starts with a one led walk along paths that run alongside bubbling brooks and waterfalls. There is an abundance of wildlife to spot along the route. Plenty of wildfowl, woodland birds, and insects. Leeds Castle is famous for its black swans. Leeds Castle is a castle in Kent, England, five miles southeast of Maidstone. It is built on islands in a lake formed by the River Len to the east of the village of Leeds. A castle has existed on the site since 1119, the first being a simple stone stronghold which served as a military post in the time of the Norman intrusions into England. In the 13th century, it came into the hands of King Edward I. In the 16th century, Henry VIII used it as a dwelling for his first wife, Catherine of Aragon. The present castle dates mostly from this 19th century. It has been open to the public since 1976. From 857, the site was owned by a Saxon chief called Lead, who built a wooden structure on two islands in the middle, middle of the river Len. In 1119, Robert de Crivicor rebuilt it in a stone as a Norman stronghold. What formed this Norman stronghold took is uncertain because it was built and rebuilt and transformed in the following centuries. In 1278, the castle was bought by King Edward's first queen, Eleanor of Castile. As a favored, favored residence of Edward's, it saw considerable investment. The king enhanced its defenses, and it was probably Edward who created the lake that surrounds the castle. In 
Henry VIII transformed the castle in 1519 for his first wife, Catherine of Aragon. A painting commemorating his meeting with Francis I of France still hangs there. The castle escaped destruction during the English Civil War because its owner, Sir Cheney Culpepper, sided with the parliamentarians. The castle was used as, a, as both an arsenal and a prison during the war. Other members of the Culpepper family had sided with the royalist John I Lord Culpepper. Robert Fairfax owned the castle for 46 years until 1793 when it passed to the Wykeham Martins. Sale of the family estates in Virginia released a large sum of money that allowed extensive repair and the remodeling of the castle in a Tudor style, completed in 1823. That resulted in the appearance today. The last private owner of the castle was Olive Lady Bailey, daughter of Almeric Page, first Baron Queen Voro and his first wife Pauline Payne Whitney, an American heiress. Lady Bailey bought the castle in 1926 for £180,000. She, she dec redecorated the interior first working with the French architect and designer Armand Albert Ratio, who oversaw exterior alterations and added interior features such as the 16th century style carved oak staircase, then with the Paris decorator Stephanie Boudin. During the early part of the World War II, the castle was used as a hospital where Lady Bailey and her daughters hosted burn Commonwealth airmen as part of their recovery. Survivors remember the experience with fondness. Upon her death in 1974, Lady Berry left the castle to the Leeds Castle Foundation, a private charitable trust whose aim is to preserve the castle and the grounds for the benefit of the public. An estimated 1.4 million pounds was invested and a further 400,000 pounds was retrieved from the sale of the furniture to make improvements to the castle and attract paying corporate conferences. However, it was quickly understood that it could not support the ongoing cost of running the estate. So in 1975, the gardens were open to the public and the following year the castle was also made available to the visitors. On July 17, 1978, the castle was the site of the meeting between the Egyptian Foreign Minister Mohammed Ibrahim Carmel and Israeli Foreign Minister Moshe Dayan and Cyrus Bonds of the U.S. in preparation for the Camp David Accords. The castle ho also hosted the Northern Ireland Peace Talks held in September 2004 led by Tony Blair. The castle is steep in history and as you walk around the grand rooms, you can see how it has changed over the years with rooms from different eras. There are gorgeous antiques to view and paintings adorning the walls. The castle is as pretty inside as it is outside. There is plenty of information within the castle with the option of an audio guide. The facilities are really good. Plenty of places to stop for food and drinks, snacks and ice cream. Toilets are clean and tidy. If you bring your own food, there are plenty of gorgeous spots for a picnic. Should you wish you can take 
in the view by boat. There is a ponting available on the moot or a ferry ride across the lake for a, for a small extra charge. You can also ride the train to and from the car park if you wanted to for a small extra fee. Well, that's all mate. Thank you for joining us on our tour to the Leeds Castle. Please don't forget to like and subscribe for more blogs and I'll see you on the next blog. Thank you for watching. Bye!